more travelers worldwide are seeking safe and cost-saving tourist destinations. Vietnam is among the top list these years. Located in Southeast Asia, with breathtaking landscapes and an incredibly diverse culinary scene, since last year, it has been continuously recommended by re-owned newspapers from the United Kingdom, the United States, Germany and Canada. Tourism played a vital part in the Vietnamese economy. During the pandemic, Vietnam's tourism revenue incurred losses of $23 billion. 95% of international travel companies ceased operations, but now it's soaring up again. Hanoi, the Paris of Vietnam, was just ranked the second finest city for tourism in Asia and a sixth travel hotspot worldwide by TripAdvisor. So what's the charm of this phone city? How could it come back so vigorously after the corona lockdown? I found a German guy living in Hanoi with an interesting story to share. Patrick stopped by Vietnam during his work exploration four years ago and has not intended to leave ever since. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Have okay, a seat. Okay. okay. Do you drive you? Uh, yes. Yeah. So I'm an English teacher uh, for primary and mostly now secondary uh, schools. And that happened 2019 when I first uh, came to Vietnam to stay here for good. Uh, teaching was a big opportunity and I have my bachelor in English of Arts. So I was like, okay, let's mix that and let's see how it goes. And yeah, that's what I start doing. I started teaching kindergarten kids and slowly made my way up to older students and more challenging uh, lessons, yeah. I came here uh, during my holidays in Australia and I really liked it. The people are friendly, interesting food, good weather, uh, nice living conditions. So um, yeah, it wasn't a hard choice to come back here to start a new life, basically. Looks really good. The soup, I would say it goes with ginger, um, garlic. Hmm. One small thing, I don't think they have ginger in there. No ginger? No ginger. Garlic. Uh, how do you call it? It's lemongrass. Right? Lemongrass? Yeah, lemongrass. Oh, okay. Like all foreigners love bun cha. This is like the number one. Even Vietnam is famous for pho. Every foreigner that you're gonna ask will probably say bun cha is their favorite food. <laughs> Oh, Patrick, do you know what is this place? Uh, you mean that one? Yeah. I heard about it. It's the water puppet show. Uh, yeah. Thank my you. friend's been there, but I never had a look. I don't know what to expect from it. Really? Yes. You have never tried to a, a water puppet show in Vietnam? No. No. You need to try it now. All let's right. go inside. Okay, let's have a look.
just watched it. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Uh, yeah, it's interesting. If you think about it, it's a like very ancient form of storytelling. They use a lot of funny special effects and build in a lot of jokes. Uh, personally, I would recommend if you watch the show, get like the headphones where you get the translation. I missed out on that. Uh, my Vietnamese is still not good enough, but uh, yeah, funny little stories and definitely worth a watch. The tourism workforce has been largely depleted, with a few hanging on to their jobs precariously. Even prominent players like Lily Travel, a Hanoi based travel agency, had to hit pause on their operations. However, sitting down with Lily, the CEO, her outlook remains strikingly optimistic. Yeah, um, uh, you know, in uh, um, August to 20, 2020, we had to close everything. We had to close to our hostel, travel company, and restaurant. So we, to be honest, at that time, I'm very stressed. But during nearly two years of COVID, I'm very lucky because um, I found a way that I need to come back inside. Two years of COVID is very, very important time for me and for another staff in the travel. We had time and we started to improve ourselves. And maybe because of that two years, after one year reopened after COVID-19, now even everything become better than before COVID. Back then, I bet that you still had to pay for the bills. Yes. So where did the money come from? <laughs> you know, in Vietnam, most of the money come from you, yourself. So when I have money, normally I still yeah, save it. That's why in the difficult time, we still have money to cover everything. Even we have money to pay 50% for our staff during all the time of COVID. In 2021, Vietnamese airline industry experienced the darkest period of all time. Largest national airlines are on the brink of bankruptcy, one after another. This year, along with a sharp increase in international tourist numbers, the business situation of airlines also began to rebound. Airlines and tourism have always had a very good and tight connection. That's why I'm here today at Vietnam Airlines, a national team of airlines in Vietnam, to find out more about how they are doing, planning to attract more customers, including both local customers and international customers. Đại dịch Covid-19 là chưa bao giờ nhìn thấy trong lịch sử hai trong những cái ngành mà đặc, đặc biệt nghiêm trọng đấy là ngành hàng không và ngành du lịch. Với ngành hàng không thì các cái số liệu của Hiệp hội Hàng không Quốc tế đã công bố qua các năm vừa rồi đều là thua lỗ và đến năm 2000 22 đầu năm 2023 thì có những cái sự khởi sắc hơn khi chính phủ các nước nới lỏng các chính sách kiểm soát Covid và bắt đầu cho phát động mở cửa lại các đường bay và đặc biệt là vừa rồi thì chính phủ Việt Nam thì cũng có cái chính sách kiểm soát dịch bệnh rất tốt và cũng đã tuyên bố mở cửa từ tháng 3 năm 2022. Do vậy thì cũng đã có những cái thị trường khách quay trở lại và cái quan trọng với cả ngành hàng không với các hãng hàng không với Việt Nam Airlines là có thị trường khách được quay trở lại. Tôi cũng rất đồng cảm với những điều mà ông vừa chia sẻ. Vậy thì sau đại dịch Covid-19, Việt Nam Airlines đã và đang có những biện pháp gì để khắc phục những khó khăn từ sau đại dịch ạ? Việt Nam Airlines là theo sát được những cái diễn biến của thị trường của những cái tình huống phòng chống dịch bệnh để mà mình kịp thời mở lại những cái đường bay của mình, tăng tần suất khai thác và cho đến nay thì Việt Nam Airlines cũng đã đối với thị trường quốc tế thì đang quay trở lại được mức đến giờ là khoảng 80% và cái điểm thứ hai đấy là tập trung vào quản trị chi phí với Việt Nam Airlines thì à, còn phải tập trung vào nhiều những chương trình khác nữa à, đấy là ví dụ như à, những cái chương trình và đảm bảo là an toàn là ưu tiên số 1 và tiếp đến là xây dựng cái văn hóa dịch vụ nâng tầm tập trung cho chất lượng dịch vụ à, nâng cao cái trải nghiệm của hành khách khi mà đến với cả Việt Nam Airlines và tập trung nữa đấy là tập trung cho công tác chuyển đổi số và điểm hết sức quan trọng đấy là tập trung cho 
xây dựng cái môi trường làm việc một cái môi trường làm việc tốt cho cán bộ công nhân viên I've been here from the start till now so now it's luckily over and um, yeah there was an interesting experience um, when it first started and the news came that it's like it comes from China uh, we were all here kind of afraid because we are in a neighbor country we didn't know how to act so everything was just going on as normal then the first little lockdowns happened they were, weren't too serious and um, I know some of my friends immediately made the decision to go back to their home country, like to the Netherlands and England, which they immediately regretted <laughs> because they ended up being there in a lockdown while we were free. One of the good things during COVID, like all of the people, especially the expat community, got very close. Everyone helped each other, but there were no new faces joining the group. Uh, every bar you would go, you see the same people because there were no new people coming. We were all on the, on the, at the point, at one point that we thought we all need to leave. It was like four months with no work and there was no light in the end of the tunnel. So uh, during that time we were like quite sad. Everyone was like, okay, that's it. And uh, yeah, that's also why I got the Taiho tattoo. <laughs> I mean, the government did support the people, like they gave people rice and there were also food stations for people in need. But uh, as a Westerner, uh, you had more to look out for yourself, right? Luckily, me and most of my friends, we had savings for the most of the time. But then luckily, I don't know how quick it happened, but the good news came up. There was a lot of uh, online work coming up and all my friends, all the, the whole expat community basically could earn money again, pay the rent. That's also a thing with the rent. Uh, that was really nice from a lot of the landlords to cut down on the rent prices. Some of my friends could go down like 50%, me too. Uh, I don't know how big that was around global news, but Vietnam handled the pandemic really well. Like the moment they shut down the, the uh, borders, and no one could enter the country. It was basically under control. But for what it was, eight months, compared to a lot of other places, we were all lucky. Like all of my friends, we all say the same. I'm pretty sure there will be also another one. This main event that we saw before, the big stage, that happens every Friday and Saturday and it's a common thing between experts to f find it quite funny that they built this stage, this massive stage, every Friday and then tear down on Sunday. But yeah, like Vietnamese people are not lazy, <laughs> they build up the stage every week. So as you see, life is thriving here again, tourism is going on and uh, yeah, it didn't used to be like this a year ago actually. Uh, during the pandemic, this place was mostly empty. A couple of Vietnamese people were around, but yeah, otherwise there was not much more going on. And it's very good to see that the Hanoi recovered more than 100%. You could say 120% from the pandemic. Yeah, I just wanted to inter introduce them to something new, some of the specialities here. So when they came here to Vietnam to visit me, we went near Huang Kiem Lake to Chung Cafe. I bet that was, that was the name. In, here in Vietnam, you have a lot of variety in coffees. So it's very interesting for people to experience that themselves. Mm. I don't think this is going to be a thing uh, in the near future in the West for, for now. But um, as I told you, like my, ma my mom didn't need any convincing. She just went home and immediately Googled the recipe. Tourism and culture in Hanoi are opening a new chapter where cultural enthusiasts can experience a new sense of life. Patrick, like many foreigners and local residents, has found faith in Hanoi's recovery as it has in lights illuminate the streets, with sense of pride ingrained in every corner, every smile, and every step of those who hold dear to this nation. Mm. 